Welcome to our USJF Zoom workshop with Sissy John Trader. Our topic today is scavenger hunt with Judo in mind. You know, good afternoon, morning, or whatever time it is, wherever you're at. Um, th this is this was the home dojo uh, while we were trying to set up. I tried doing it from seating in the office in itself, but that just didn't get anything moving. So I moved it down to the garage, and that's where I decided to present from today. Um, as Chuck and Mitchell indicated, we like all of you probably were shut down uh, for a fair period of time. We uh, kind of read the writing on the wall and actually shut the dojo down about a week before the mandate came down to shut everything down. But we wanted to try to find a way to stay engaged. And many of the kids decided to kind of take it upon themselves and would, during the workday as such, they had a 12 o'clock workout session that they just took on themselves, which was great. Uh, many of the dojo kids in themselves wanted to do something. Um, we, as, as a dojo, the talk, the senseis talked and decided that, hey, let's go ahead and do something, keep it rolling, but do an evening class the same nights that we would normally meet. Um, and so we decided to do basically a half hour to 45 minute Zoom. And it was led by a variety of senseis. Each one decided to take some time and we usually tried to do it for about an eight to, eight to 10 week period of time. Well, I watched my guys do this um, and thought, okay, well, I better jump into the fray too, but I wanted to do something a little different. I didn't want to just do the workouts that they were doing. And it was, it was really neat to watch because one of our guys is like a physical therapist. That's his trade. And he was bringing the physical therapy side of things to the, the class, talking about stretching, talking about how the muscles work. It was very interesting. I thought, well, you know, if they're going to do something a little different other than just getting and grabbing a hold of the bands and trying to work out, that I needed to do something different as well. And I took a lesson from um, our, my certification class uh, with Mitchell uh, for teacher and, and that he took an inanimate object and says, okay, teach a technique with this. And when we went down and did the master training as well, that subject was brought up again. And I thought, well, here's a perfect opportunity to learn something or use something that I learned. And I wanted to try to take as many items as I could and introduce a new training partner to the, to the students and some of the black belts that attended the classes as well on Zoom to try to encourage them to use other items to help enhance their judo, um, uh, some you know different things as such. So one of the things that we were lucky as a dojo is we had a benefactor, one of our members of a successful business went and purchased some of the Fuji training bands um, for the club. And any student that wanted a set or any sensei that wanted a set, we could go and pick it up. He, he brought in, I think it was about 40 of them and brought them in. And so everybody that wanted one got one. Um, uh, and we incorporated that within the workout. But once again, I didn't want it just to be band specific. I wanted something to go with the bands or could be used in conjunction with the bands to help with their training. The, uh, uh, if you don't have the training bands, there are elastic bands that are used for physical therapy that can be used. I, as a kid growing up and studying judo, used inner tube tires. Um, that was my training band. Uh, my dad uh, took a, a roll of cardboard, wrapped one of the posts in the basement of the house, and that's where I trained. That's where I worked out uh, when I wasn't at the dojo in itself. So all of these little things are something that can be used both in the dojo. Um, I took the inner tube bands. We at one point in time led a club run. We went to one of the local parks. This was a few years back, but I had enough rubber bands or inner tubes that we were able to go and do a chikomi on trees. So we'd be running the course, we'd stop, we'd do a chikomi on trees and we continue on. Just another way to incorporate something practice wise other than just straight at the dojo. So the, the first thing that I wanna show you guys, and the way that I tried to structure this and, and seeing the, 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 the faces and where you're at, um, of course, when we were doing this uh, with the kids, 
they were in their rec rooms, they were in their living rooms, uh, they were in their garages, um, but it enabled me to watch them do these exercises. Now, I don't know if any of you are set up for that or not, but if you are, I'm willing to watch. You're watching me, it's only fair. But if you don't, that's okay. We'll talk through it as such. And, and please, I, Zoom is a great vehicle, but it does not replace the person to person or relationship. And there are challenges with Zoom because you don't pick up the snoring from somebody sitting in the back. You don't pick up that head bob that you see. You, so there, that interaction is important to me so if you have questions, chime in. I'm more than happy to slow the pace down or speed it up. Some of these things you probably have seen before. Uh, I, I, don't, you know, I don't hold a patent on any of this, but I felt that it was necessary to give them some additional tools to keep the interest level up and then not just be a boring, uh, that's what we're gonna do again this Tuesday, this Thursday, um, but throw something different at them. So the, the first thing up is the training bands themselves. And there's all kinds of YouTube videos on what to do with the training bands and how you can work them. I tried to do as much exaggeration with the bands with my students as possible. Um, I'm gonna back up here just a little bit. My training bands are conveniently against the post here, of course, if they don't get hung up, which they do on occasion. but the first thing that I always tried to do with my students was to get them to exaggerate the pole. I wanted them to have that extra oomph. I didn't want them shortchanging it. I didn't want them calling it to this point. I wanted to exaggerate it. And the bands are a perfect way to do that. The bodies don't necessarily, your opponent or your partner doesn't necessarily go that full stent. But if you condition, and this is what I told my students, if you condition your muscles for that muscle memory in terms of where you want it to go, that that's the way you're gonna go. Whether it gets pulled up short or not, but don't shorten it yourself. Don't only pull to here, exaggerate, bring it all the way. And so the first drill usually was just across the face, bringing it through. Anybody else have the trouble of talking about your wristwatch when they don't wear wristwatches anymore? So it's past the face, looking at the wristwatch, this way, bringing it up to the ear, this way. So this was just general warm-ups as such that I would usually get them to do in terms of practice, you know, practice stepping in, but general workout with the bands themselves. Now, one of the elements that I like to add, and I've done this before, but it's always worked well for me. The first scavenger item that you need to go and look for, if you're going to go and do it, masking tape, painter's tape. I found this to be a great little tool. We use it in the dojo. We use it, I use it here. Um, but this is where I use it in that I bring it down and I make a target. One of the things that I found with our students as such, and probably with yours too, is the footman, the, the placement of their feet. So they step in, they shorten it up. They don't turn all the way around. Giving them a target and something to work on and visual gives them that, that they got to step into their target itself. And then when they step back out, make another train in. So using the targets help get them to be a little more focused in regards to their foot placement. Now, not all techniques do that, but for me, trying to get them to get their heels somewhat close, get a pedestal underneath, not standing so wide, you know, that they're, they're doing this as opposed to where they should be, okay? So the tape is the first item. Now then I incorporate that with the bands. So now they've got to step in, but I want them to focus on getting at the, at the base first. So I love to build from the ground up. So with my students, I want them to have the bands and practice the stepping in, pulling, but focus on getting that feet into the target itself. Each time, once they get that and they start to get a sense for where it is, then they can speed it up 
and incorporate that exaggeration on the pole itself too. So in, out, but I'm in the target. That's what we wanna try for first or what I wanted them to try for first, okay? So the next item up that I wanted to, unless there are questions on duct tape or masking tape, duct tape, whatever, I know that you guys, probably all of you have used that idea before, you know, as well. But I just found that to be a great way to get them to think about where their foot placement is. I know I'm yelling at them all the time, you know, turn all the way in, get that other foot in, get that other foot in. This gave them something to target with. So the next item up. John? Yes. Ms. Mitchell? So, yeah, so you, you had the kids go run around and find tape at home and then make the rectangle on the, on whatever their practice area is. Is that what yep. you did? Yep. Just give them something to, they had, they had to go find it. And most of them did. Most of them had it. And I would have them focus the camera down so I could watch their feet and then make corrections there. But most of them were watching their feet when they were trying to get inside the targets. So, you know, and then you work it up from there. You, you don't, you know, okay, great. You got your feet. Now it's by feel. It's by muscle memory where your feet go. And then you start working the rest of the way up. Are they bending their knees? Are they keeping their back straight? Are they pulling? But the targets were the first thing. Let's get the feet in the right spot. The next item that I used was a broom um, as a partner. I mean, Fred Astaire could dance with a broom and it looked great. I figured we could dance with a broom too. So with the broom in itself, we did a, I did a few different techniques, but the first one that I did, <laughs> sorry, Mitchell, Osotogari. That's a personal joke. I think Kristen knows that one too. But the, uh, uh, the first one that I did was Osotogari with the, the broom in itself. And what I did was I wanted them to focus on the step by of the broom itself so if I'm loud enough, I should be, I hope. But position the broom and then practice just a step by and then by and, and you can sweep up. Initially, I always want my students just to bypass it, just to come close to it so that they can there, but it gives them something to hit and then they can come through and practice that. Now, I also wanted to utilize the bands. And this is where I've not seen a lot. I'm sure that other people do it. I gotta believe other people do it. But with the bands themselves, I like to use them multi-dimensional. I don't, I wanna try to recreate the forces that would be working against the student or the practitioner or the judoka. Sometimes that direction goes opposite, of course, the direction we're pulling them. We're pulling them this direction, they're resisting this way. Use the bands in that fashion. So in this case, what I would do is for Osotogari, take the band that's the lapel and the band that's the sleeve, and this is where I'm holding them. But I'm holding them with it going onto my right side here. I'm a righty, so I practice most of my techniques right. But when I go to step in, the bands are pulling against me. So I'm getting the resistance from my opponent that direction. If they're going the way I want them to go, great. But usually it's trying to get away from me. So I wanted the students to feel that. So we start with them kind of at a neutral position, take that step, feel the pull away from me, okay? And then you can take another step over and increase the tension, make it even more so. Now where the broom comes in, is I had them take the broom and I put it onto the sleeve side and just wrap the band around it once so that it stands on its own with me holding on to it. And as always, what I always try to tell them is that I want that head to go to the back. And so by putting the broom in that, I'm getting it to move in the direction that I want without the use of this hand, which we all use it on their shoulders to push and chest to push. But I want this hand here to focus a little bit more and get them to move that broom in that fashion. Want that head back. 
So we go back, is, is it tilting back? Ask them the question there. Once that's done, then you can get them to take their step in, go by, take the step, go by. You want that broom to move in the direction of the opponent that you want. That's off balancing into that rear leg. When you're going right or left, off balancing into that, and then you can come in. And you can go in and kick it up too, okay? But just another method of getting them to move with the bands using the broom to try to get it to, uh, to work for you. Um, watching them practice that, uh, it was encouraging. Um, I think you guys, all of you instructors, when you see something that seems to work in regards to getting their attention and you're starting to see them making the moves that you want them to move, that's a success, okay? And I, for me, there's nothing more rewarding than watching that, than seeing them grasp the concept. The broom worked well for that, okay? The other thing that I use the broom for is a little Ashiwaza practice. So what I would do is I put the foot out and just have them tap their foot with that broom. This is your opponent or your partner's foot coming in for a foot sweep on you. So now it was just if they had their parent there, I'd have the parent hold the broom and do the sweeping. If they were on their own, then they were just holding with one hand and sweeping. But when the sweep comes, move the foot and sweep. It was just a simple practice there, okay? So just another drill that they could do, and whether they did it left or right, I wanted them to tap a couple of times so that they know the feeling, move, sweep, okay? Tap, tap, sweep. So again, just another tool to try to get the motion with the foot uh, going and the broom seemed to work well for that. Okay. The next item, are there any questions on any of those yet? Are these some things that you guys have tried? Roy, I see you nodding your head. Okay, good, good. So the next item, I wanted to try to find other things, not just the bands, but something simple and something that is, you know, judo centric as such. And one of those things is grip, trying to develop a grip, trying to make sure that they would get a decent grip on their opponent. Sometimes matches are win and loss in terms of how well you grip or how well you place. So the next item up for the scavenger hunt, dish towel or hand towel, whatever you might have. And what I had the students do with this, and this is something they could do while they were watching TV, talking to their parents, whatever it might be, but to take the, the towel and basically just have them go and bunch it up in the grip just to, to help to develop the grip. Let it drop down again, bunch it up, get the fingers tight. Now, once they've done that a number of times, what I asked them to do was hold it towards the ends but then try to rip it out of their own grip. Try to just snap it any which way they could. As long as they were still holding on to it, then their grip was stable, was good. Might slip down, but if they, whoops, okay, well, start over again. So then just ball it up, ball it up again, and then try pulling. Many of us have done the finger exercises, the flipping of the thumbs in, um, we tried to do those various exercises there. I wanted to give them something that they could physically touch and feel and move with. And this just seemed to work really well. Whether you try to do it maybe just with one hand and grip or use both hands and ball it up, get it there. Crawl it up with the fingers and just get it tight, okay? Anybody got a dish towel? No, maybe. <laughs> okay. All right, next item up, and or facsimile thereof, tennis ball. Could be a small ball, could be a um, play ball, ground ball, but something of a smaller size as such. I find that I tried to get them again with finger manipulation, be able to squeeze the ball itself uh, to help to develop the grip strength. You can do it with either hand. Uh, there. 
But where I wanted them to focus on with the ball in itself was the idea of Ashiwaza. Now, many a time with our students as such, they end up tending to kick a little too high. They tend to go up onto the ankle or above versus hitting the, the there. So I wanted to try to condition them, again, muscle memory, to keep the foot down on the ground. And the tennis ball seemed to work real well. I wasn't looking for a soccer kick, but I was looking for them to be able to sweep the ball with their foot and move it along. Now, whether it was with force or whether it was just to push it, either or, the, the principle was to keep the foot down on the ground. Many a times when I first watched them do this, their foot would be up high and it would go across the top of the ball. Instead of sweeping it this way, they'd go here and roll the ball and their foot over the top. So by doing the tennis ball on the ground, I should have set up a backstop, I didn't. But just wanted them to come in and do the sweep here. If they went too high, then the ball stayed under their foot and rolled. So it was just sweep. I got to retrieve it. Having a catcher would be a good thing for this drill or a wall that they can kick it to. But it can do it with either foot. So it's just turn the, the foot as we do with our Ashiwaza, but I wanted to condition them to keep it low. For those of you that do golf, you know you got to keep the club low to do any of your shots. It's got to be, it can't go across the top of the ball, it won't go anywhere near. Same thing with our foot sweep. If we go too high on the ball, our foot rolls over the top of it. Okay. All right. Any questions? So two things with the balls, manipulation with the hand, squeezing, and then using it for Ashiwaza as a, as a quick little drill to be able to move things around. Okay. John, John I have a question. Yeah. Do you, uh, this is Chuck. Um, when you have a tennis ball at home, chances are you've got a whole bunch of tennis balls at home. Do you ever line them up and have them practice that way so they're not uh, delayed in going to find out, uh, going to look under the sofa to find out where in the world the, the tennis ball went? No, but that's a good tip. Right. If you've got multiple balls, go after it. Otherwise, set up a little backstop, um, a back brace, which now that I'm thinking about it, I have something that I could have done that with, but oh well. Um, but anyway, that, no, that would be a great, great one to line them up and go with that too. In the dojo, you can kind of do what I envision doing is just kind of a team session. You pair up, you got one person over on one side, one on the other, boot the ball over, boot the ball back, boot the ball over, boot the ball back. You can just get it going back and forth, um, and alternate feet. It could be a great cardio drill as well as a drill skill drill for the foot in itself. So, Okay. All right, the next item that I used is uh, either a step stool, um, a dining room chair, folding chair, whatever you might happen to have available. And of course, I caution the kids that don't use the good furniture. Um, you know, those things that we don't think we have to say, say it. It's always the safest bet. So for me, because I'm in the garage, it's just a, a standard little step stool this way um, with the four, four feet. Again, what I wanted to try to do with this was to get the kids to think about or the students to think about off balancing. Now, a two-legged human, which most of us, oh, that means my battery's going low. Let me get this real quick. Okay, there we go. So with a, with a two-legged human, it's like tilt, the, tilt the chair or the uh, step stool onto the, the two feet. And in any of these, this isn't mimicking our, our Kazushi, but it is mimicking the direction that we need this thing to go for them to be off balance. And so I wanted them to start thinking about how do I get that person or that item onto the off balance point? So in this case, I want to tip it this way, bring it over off to the leg. And the technique that I chose to work on with this was no, not Osotakari, 
but how'd I go she? And the thought being is that we can do several different things with the bands as well as with the, the implement or the tool to make this work. Now to start with what I wanted them to do basically is stand in front of the, the step stool, take their step in as if they're doing harakoshi and bring it over to the side so that it is up onto that one leg. Mimic the motion that you're going to have with that. And when you step in, you're ready to go and you can pick it up. Many times I have the student pick the chair or pick the chair and or folding chair or whatever it was up and then hold it. I'd ask them to hold that position. Now, I mentioned the bands on this too. Um, trying to wrap it around the chair doesn't necessarily work, but the same principles hold true in terms of how we're trying to think about off balancing. So if we're focusing on one technique, uh, the one technique being Haragoshi in this case, I want them to simulate stepping in on that as well. Once again, I want the bands to work for me in that in kata practice, the movements on that is a, is a three step or actually two step uh, with the, the turn on the third. That's what I tried to implement with this as well. And so with the footwork, I had them focus on kata style in terms of that. So they were gonna take the one step, two steps, and then turn and then sweep back. Now the difference is with the bands, it's pulling, it's gonna pull you back on the steps. We go from a neutral here to our first step and our second step, now the bands are pulling me back. Now I've got to keep that pull going the direction I want, okay? The direction I want to do that sweep. So we did the same thing with the top stool again, and then we drug it along with us for the motion that we wanted with the legs. So here, we take our one step, two steps off balance, and then go back, and then we can sweep. So just another tool to use uh, to try to get them to think about off balancing and how that works, how the mechanics work for that. Any questions? Not hearing any, move on to the next one. And this one, paper plate, paper plate, okay? With this one, and this is the one drill that, that, that I'm most proud of in the sense of watching them after they practice with this, the improvement was noticeable in regards to how they did their Ouchigati. And I know as an instructor for me, getting them to keep that foot down and not pick your partner up and write them, get them to stand. So all of a sudden now it's a big push drill and you're trying to push them and rattle them to get them to jump off the one leg versus just taking the leg back behind and dropping them next to you, which is the way that I've always tried to do my ochigaris. okay? So with this, the drill is relatively simple. Put it down on the ground. What I wanted them to do was connect with the plate, connect with the plate, and then drag it around behind them. Now you can't do that if you're picking your foot up, okay? So in this case, my Ojigati was step, step, plant the foot where it's gonna go and then drag it around behind. So I just bring that plate around behind. If I got them to do anything, it would get this initially. Okay, so make that big circle, but keep the plate down on the ground when you're all the way around. And then we try to add the steps into it. So it would be step, step, or more importantly, probably step, step, and then circle around, okay? So just an easy drill. And like I said, when I asked them to show me Ochigati without the plate, the number of students that kept that foot down on the ground, I wasn't seeing this, okay? They were keeping the foot down on the ground all the way through the circle to the back, all right? So that, that particular one worked well. I'm gonna add one other element in that I brought the bands into this one as well. 
Because again, I told you what I tried to do with the bands, or wanted to do with the bands, was to change up the direction. This makes a ton of sense for almost any forward technique, okay? But doing Ochigati, I asked them to bring the bands on their backside and to take their grip, lapel, sleeve, okay? Now, when I step in, the bands are pulling me back. And what I wanted to do was I wanted the bands to help condition me in terms of where do my hands go on this technique. Here, I'm on the lapel. If I hook that leg correctly, it's going to go off to the side, okay? But I want to keep the pressure on. But this pulls me back, gives me a little bit more direction. Well, now, add the plate into that drill. And so it's you know, step, step, having the bands. This is what would happen with a lot of them. They get jerked back until they realize they got to keep their body into it. So step, step, and then circle. Okay. So it was just another way of getting them to think about the mechanics and practice with those things in mind. Again, can't if you lift your foot up off the plate, it doesn't go behind you. So it was just a target, another target, if you will, for them in terms of movement. The bands, again, I suggest with my kids, I wanted them to have different angles, different restrict or different resistances that would mimic what would happen on the mat. So they weren't surprised. Um, so anyway, any questions? You guys are a quiet batch. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really good. This is Mitchell. I thought that was really good, especially the uh, the reverse of the bands that kind of gets them to have that lean and the, the slide. I think that the uh, the use of the uh, the broom head and the direction of the broom gives a visual uh, a visual representation of of the physics of what we're trying to do. Even though it's just little kids, they can see. Oh, this is it's a, a bend this way, or to, to do osotogari, you have to do do that right rear corner, and that's how you do it. I, I think this is very inventive, and uh, just with the simple stuff. Hey, uh, John, question. So, I think what you're doing is excellent, and it's really innovative. And uh, we've done similar things, but uh, you're really creative. And um, we're finding that how do you transfer what you're doing in an online meet online class? to actually in the dojo really gives you um, things we've learned now and we transfer the dojo in person kind of brings our students up. It kind of, it kind of accelerates the learning even more because they've learned that basic move, movement based on what you're doing. And then bringing that same kind of drill into the dojo as solo, it just, we've seen them juggernaut. So I love the stuff you're doing. And we do the tennis balls that you do. Um, and we actually do that against the dojo wall. So the student is hitting it against the wall sharp and they have to catch again, hit it against the wall. So they're going down along the wall and go hit, 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 hit. But so right on the same page you are uh, and we're seeing like huge improvements just because of the stuff that you're doing. But again, you're more inventive than us, more creative. So I'm gonna steal wow. some things. So thank you. I, I like the that. plate. I like the plate, man. <laughs> yeah, the plate was great. Yeah, it's great. Um, the other thing that I had suggested on the broom for some of the kids um, was if they had balloons around the house, uh, was to put a balloon on top. Uh, that would even give more of a representative of a head as such. They could draw a face on it. They could do, you know, be creative with it that way if they wanted. But the, the principle was there. You had to move it back. And, uh, you know, if you're moving the body back, even if the head comes forward like a balloon would, you're still moving it back. It's not always going to be this as long as you got the body moving in the direction that you want. So, okay. Any other questions? Guys, thank you. I appreciate you taking your Sunday afternoon to listen to me. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent.